Good. Nope. Good evening and welcome to a new to your maker list. So, I know it's a long time, and uh, I invest my time to play a new card game called Ultra TCG. It's uh, from this uh, French studio Equinix, and it was released at 13 September. Uh, the Kickstarter was like in the early of this year, in March, I think. And I am totally into it now, right now. This is uh, this is what now mostly it's my uh, hobby time, my free time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> when I have free time, of course. So, so uh, in this video, I will just I, I just make a few games, uh, a few. I think I have made a lot of games right now. Uh, I am I have tested every, um, diff uh, diff ah, different faction with different hero, and I think I will know. A team maker list, from my opinion, who's the best hero to play and who's the baddest hero, worst hero to play, and uh, all in context of the first edition, the season one box, or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, yeah, it's not so long ago. I mean, I mean, it's not like uh, our site September comes out if we have no October. So. I am main XM player, but I changed now to Muna because XM has problems. A friend of mine plays Bravos, the other one plays uh, Izmir, Izmir with Orlis. And I have to say Orlis was really uh, a pain in the ass. At the start, uh, all of us three has uh, buy the Kickstarter version with three or four uh, displays. and. We opened, we have also ordered some starter decks and played the starter decks and it was like so, our first sight from the um, factions was like, yeah, all this seems kind of weak, um, I don't know, Axiom maybe has a good push and Bravo seems really strong, I think Bravo's will be made and uh, we talk a little, we talk a lot about this game every day I think, uh, or we chat every day about the game in a WhatsApp group, uh, what we have met. And yeah, after I learned and learned play games over games in the board game arena, where you can play now uh, from the third party, um, you can connect for people now. You can connect your board game arena with your altered account, and you can play your decks if they are legal, if they are legal in the board game arena, and can and you can test in your decks. Okay, back to the topic. The Nicholas, best to worst hero. We have uh, fifteen heroes by six faction. Uh, every faction has three heroes. So we start with Ismi, I think. So Afanas. Uh, it's like what what I really like about Afanas is uh, really strong from the consistency here. I mean, you have no one time effect. You can trigger it every time. Boost uh, your um, your units. So for people who don't know or forget, uh, uh, Afanas says for every spell you uh, cast, you can give one of your characters boost plus one. I uh, boost one. So, and I think I'm not the biggest fan of Izmir, and I thought that the Izmir has really, I, I know they have really strong cards, but they're really expensive. For this season, I would say, I, I think I will put him here. But with all the cards, and he's really de dependent on the cards, I mean, you need spells to use him, I will just put him on the grade. I mean, okay, you have an Izmir magical training for one, and uh, for one hand cost, for two reserve cost, if you play the rare, three hand cost, if you play the Kamen. But this is one of the cards I doesn't see uh, outside of the uh, Afana section. So you play it rare in my eyes. So Afanas is really strong because you can trade every time if you cast the spell, this ability. Okay. Um, her, I forgot her name, damn it. She has the effect if you are the first player after you. After you means uh, you skipped your turn, turn this, so this one turn. So. This is really strong, but you don't want to start at this, at this uh, first player in the first one. You want to start at the second player because then you can use your ability in the second round. 
which makes a little bit uh yeah more give you more tactical options i think okay when you are the first player in the first round you got later the better after you attack i think um it's i think it's really funny because you can say l let's say in the scenario the enemy is um uh, the enemy is the first player. It's your turn, you play a card. The enemy against play a card, you say after you. So he plays the third card. He has, he, has a, he has mana, yes, no, maybe, or he has need to pass. And then you can make your turn. She re uh, works really good with um, Alice. And maybe the Baba Yaga house, but I'm not sure for that. I think she can be really pretty strong, but I doesn't see her right now. Or be solid, but I don't see her in the first box. I think she needs a little bit more cards. I think she needs a more um, lower cost cards. But Izmi is like, yeah, mid range, right? In my eyes. Huh? I mean, it's all in my eyes, right? Don't forget it. This is just my opinion. I'm not the master of anything, or the president of the uh, ultra council in Germany, or Berlin. So, uh, yeah, I think she can be. Maybe here, maybe sometimes here, but right now, right here, with the first box, it's like meh. Um, blah, 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 and more. More is a sacrifice deck. I am... I dislike sacrifice. It doesn't matter in which game. I hate it. In Magic, I hate it. In Keyforge, I hate it. I hate it. Everywhere. In my eyes, she's doesn't not so strong. And for the people who don't know or forget, it's like um, tap her. If it's your turn, you can for free uh, make more. More is the token character who says every time you sacrifice a character, I get two boosts. So if uh, I'm the second player, I need to pay one mana to uh, cast him. I'm not the biggest fan. I know we have uh, Anubis, we have uh, Anasi, I think. And we have uh, this one dancer, I think, also with Sacrifice. We have the Kraken. But the Kraken is like, it costs seven mana, Sacrifice. I don't see it. I don't see the Kraken. I'm not sure. I would should use more for the Sacrifice for the Kraken if I'm the first player than one of my other units, maybe. So, and she, I don't know. I think this game is right now rush forward. Build up speed, and I think you, ki I mean, you kill your own um, characters. You lose speed, maybe. And, yeah, you boost you more. You boost one lane. Okay, if you sacrifice two times, three times, the more has 666. We have so many uh, hard removal on the way in the game right now that I can easily kill more and then uh, you sacrifice for nothing you all, all of your enemies i mean you you, you uh, take away my options to cast the hard removal of something else so. okay and then you sacrifice sacrifice oh there's just like oh, two uh, two units left for me hmm the chosen is not so hard if i see the six plus plus a uh, 666 so i think right now she's a meh I think she can. I think she can be here if the card support got better, but in this case, nope. I don't see it right now. So this is my second main faction now, and we start with my with the worst. Um, why here? She says, if I win in the forest by him, draw a card, put the card in the reserve. So uh, I can trigger this one time if I won in the first round uh, the both sides here on the companion side. I think I just draw one card. This was like this, right? Because I, th I think she says it like this. Maybe I misinterpreted her. And um, we have then what, what we have left after the companion hero zone. We have the single forest left, we have the forest with the mountains and we have the forest of the sea. We have three regions left where I can trigger this. And it's like... It's like I can trigger her five times. 
and it seems like she she's like um traced from Exim or she's like uh, Aksati from Bravos. They have the similar card draw effect. But I think the other two, I, I think every other character makes a little bit more and it's not so specific like her to win in the forest region. It's and you have to win the war. When if you win in the here in companion zone through the mountain not through the forest you don't draw the cards it's like the forest and the water region if you won the the region from the water not from the forest you move forward but you don't draw a card and she's really sp sp specific about the forest region and i'm not the biggest fan it's it's too focused on one thing and that's why i think she's she's really crap arjun arjun says this got a card from the reserve the, uh, then uh, the next card you play from the hand with cost three or less gets anchored. This is with uh, Inari, with Aloe Vera, with uh, one of the other cards really good. I mean Aloe Vera and Inari are your draws. You need them and you want them to, uh, to hold longer on the field. And I think he's... I, I think I just played one or why against i play just against him i need to really so, say sorry i play just against him so this is i don't play him so i don't know maybe how good he really is but i think this is good a negative point a really great negative point is you need a card in reserve and you want to play and moon at a card from your reserve in fact mostly but okay if you protect you um Card draw, it's like Inari. Let's say Inari stands there, you uh, sacrifice a card from the reserve or discard a card from the reserve. You get a new card, so you have the same amount of cards like before. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think he is really great from this effect. I mean, he does a lot. There's uh, there's an anchored character. Oh, he's next turn still there. And he makes shenanigans. And this is, I think he's really great in this one. Teiji. 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 Teiji and uh, Anamura, Amara, An Manara, I don't know. The giant fox. Um, I can't choose really. I'm between awesome and great because her effect is just so easy. It's just say the first card you play get once boost. And you have a lot of synergy with this card. It's like. Um, Spill the Moon, uh, and rare where when you have two boosts, you uh, resupply the noon. You have um, Tiny Gin when you can put it back uh, after the round into your mana. And it's like for every anchored character. I mean, yeah, Let, let's say Drakena. I boost my Drakena and uh, normal to 1 to 3 3. It was 0 2 2. 1 3 3. And at the next round, he's anchored. Oh, he gives himself, so he's 2-4-4. Four, four. Yeah, fun. I think she's really strong. I, for me, this is an awesome character. It's so simple, and it's so strong. Uh, in my in my uh, group, in my WhatsApp group with my uh, friends, it's like we have uh, this mathematic formula. If you pay one mana for a one 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 it's a good card. If you pay free mana for a 1-1-1, one, 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 it's a bad card. Except if it's good effects, of course. You need to uh, wait. You need to counterpart the wait. So yeah, of course, a good effect costs some, sometimes a little bit more, but it's a good effect, right? So then you have uh, Axiom characters who is like, I call more than I deliver in the mostly. In the, in the most cases in my eyes, yeah. So, uh, then Atsatsi and Flesh, I think. He's crap. In this box, he, so far, he's crap. I think he can be do be great better. I think he can, he can be solid man, but he needs a card for it. So, if you play Atsadi, I think in my eyes, you make, have to make a ramp deck with Tiny Gin, Mighty Gin, and Mana Chilling. This card says, 
give me five blah 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 counters. If you cast the spell, who costs in this case five or more? Draw a card. Then give me uh, then put my five blah blah counter to six blah blah counter. Then you have to play a six mana card to gain another counter. Then you have played a seven mana card. You to get another counter and to draw a card. So it's a little bit snowball. But for that you need, you, are, you have the essential, <laughs> unique essential Tiny Gen, Mighty Gen, and the Mana Chain to have a ramp deck. And then you, you need the big cards. And somehow to manage how to draw. Bravos has a little bit draw, really low. Bravos is more like, I rush you with big monsters or I boost them big. So you get a problem. Oh, I have the Sun Wukong. So with, I think, mana cost three to around five, five, I think, or so. And it's like, yeah, great work, do this. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, hmm, yeah. If you don't have your, the, pro the problem is the start. If you don't have your, any of your might uh, gins or your mana chilling, this card is like, Okay, I'm starting with free mana. I have nothing to play. Maybe I play this one. I pass. So we got four. Uh, we draw two cards. I put one card in the mana. I have four mana. Hmm. I didn't draw my um, my ramp cards. Where are my ramp cards? There are just nine ramp cards so far. I think. Yeah, there should. Yeah, there is only nine ramp cards so far. If you ignore the unique cards. If you ignore the unique cards. So. But you want to ramp, if you can't ramp, he does nothing. And if a hero does nothing, the enemy heroes does a little bit more work and helps the player a little bit more. If your hero does nothing, in let's say five games, you play five games and your hero does in this five games, two times, three times you trigger it, it's not worth. Something is wrong with your deck or something is wrong with the hero or Maybe you're a bad player, I don't know. Just learn a game, try another hero, and go on. Play, just play for this game. If you find a hero cool, it's okay. Make a deck, play, but you have to learn to make this, I think, to, it's really hard to make him uh, valuable. For fun, I will build a deck around him next time. So, uh, Kaisermon and Bra 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 sai bra bra si. Ah, I forgot her name. She has a similar effect to Teji, so she, I put her on. Um, awesome. Because she says, if one character is boosted in your turn, tap me, boost another character. And you have a lot of boosts. You can boost a tiny gin if you play ramp, or a mighty gin if you have ramp, or you can just boost the hell out. Um, they are s uh, very similar because she's just say the first character gets the boost. The first character you play in this round gets the boost. She says, tap me. If one character is boosted, give a, give a character a boost. You can choose the same character or you can choose a diff uh, different character. That, mean, that means you can um, change your strategy a little bit. If you put one character in the expedition zone and the hero, Oh, I need boost. I boost my hero uh, in the companion lane. Oh, now I'm uh, matching your points. Hmm, what will you do? Can I win both? Will you uh, lose one? Will, can you um, make a stall in both expedition? I don't know. It gives you, uh, I think this card gives you good pressure for a little bit late game. Kojo and Broder. I think he's Broder, but I, I think he's. He's bro. He's a broder. The fox. The broder. Firefox. Broder. Broder is annoying. He's really, really annoying. He says, when I'm the first player, make broder in the companion line. Broder is a token character with two, two, two. He he does nothing. He doesn't pay anything. He he's just the first player. Boom. I got advantage. I have uh, one character more on the board. I, if we play sacrifice, I can sacrifice Broder. Uh, yeah, 
I have a target, right? So to boost my character, give give him boost to whatever. Change the lane. You you have a character. You have one ball present for the two two two. What's not bad in my eyes. And why I put him just in great? Because there's Sigismar somewhere. We will come to him. Who makes the job a little bit better, I think. So, we go now to uh, Lyra. Aurak. Aurak. Aurak is kind of weird in my eyes because it feels like you are willing to lose a lane. Because the character says, I need characters with a base statistic of zero. So you have uh, three regions, your characters have uh, the three attributes for forest, uh, mountain and um, water, sea, ocean, whatever. And Aurak needs characters who has just at one of those attributes a zero. He gets a counter. At noon, if you have five counters, you can uh, pay them to um, reveal the top card of your deck. Or, or yeah, I think reveal would. I think this was reveal or check it itself out. And then you can choose to get you to the end or play it for free. And if you hit a really good, strong, I don't know, seven cost card, nine cost card, it can change the uh, game for you. It can tie the game uh, in your uh, ways. The problem is, anyway, what happens if you just. Um, draw or reveal a one cost card who doesn't have any function and you've paid five. So this is like typical Lyra, a little bit gamble. I'm not the biggest fan of gamble, but I think he's still a solid because you play a card for free. It doesn't matter if you play for one, two, three, four, five, etc. You gain one card more, you pay it for free. You have maybe a board present or maybe you, uh, you got a spell that you can use lately. If you wanted to pay a spell, uh, cast it for free. But it's like gamble, so it's a little bit inconsistency. And what I dislike is like the zero base statistic. It's like you have really um, to balance the decks, how many of the symbol you have, how many forest um, uh, value you have, how many mountain value you have, is how many uh, water level uh, value you have, right? And it's like, yeah, you have to you have to keep an eye of, uh, on it. I think you have to keep an eye on it, and that's my problem. I don't want to build a deck and say, okay, I have to do this and this and this. I need. This card, because the base statistics says it, maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't feel him right now in this set. Uh, yeah, I think he's solid. Fan and feedback, fan and feedback. I have to drink something. Fan and feedback. Ooh. FF. Uh, they are kind of annoying. They tri tri uh, my problem with this card, oh, wait a second. This card says, Fan of Feedback says, not in the first round, but uh, at the start of the second round and continue to the game, you draw one card. You put, I think you put one card then in, uh, in the mana and then resupply. Resupply means uh, took the uh, upper card to your reserve. You you got draw. The problem is you do, doesn't know what you put into the mana but she has really great speed with this second round. She has a card more than you. In the third round, let, let, okay, come on. In the first, uh, in the second round, she has one card more than you. In the third round, she has, in fact, two cards more than you if you doesn't draw or resupply. And she's speed. She's really speed and it's annoying. And I've seen uh, plenty of the stupid festival decks. A uh, festival is a landmark who says, if you have three characters with uh, one with anchor, one with sleep, and one with uh, fleeting, and uh, the dusk comes or after the dusk, you win the game. And this was like 
yeah, she's fast. She she built this really good app. She's really grew great, or she's maybe awesome. I think. I think. I think. No, oh, wait, wait. I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not. I will just put her uh, first here. I think in the first set she does very well. I'm. Um, I have a really. Um, uh, damn it! I forgot the word. I'm. I mean, like. I'm worried. I'm really worried that uh, or uh, worries or trousers, worries, or worries, right? That uh, she gets insane through the second set. She's annoying because she's a speed. Okay, you can just see it, but it's a surprise. You pay for more Kadra, I think. So Nevenka and Blotch, I think. I. It's a gamble character like Lyra anywhere. She says, um, tap me, throw a dice by one, uh, sacrifice a character, I think, by two to five, give one character boost one, and by six, uh, give a character anchored. Um, Lyra, her, her archetype is built around dices. I don't like Dices, but I think compared to the other, she, she's solid. You can use her ability in the first round, not like Atsatsi. You know, or um, doesn't make sense if you play uh, her in the first. Her ability is really good. I mean, you can trigger it. It's like Teiji or it's like uh, Bazira. Bazira, Bazira and Kaiserman, Bazira. But you can roll a one and sacrifice one of your characters. You can roll a six and anchor, which makes like Arjun. But it's inconsistent because you have to roll a dice. And in most cases, you just give plus one boost. But sometimes, like um, my friend who plays her, her lot, I have seen sometimes he just roll often the one. And, uh, and just with the one, he lose the lane. So. It's funny with her. I I, th I think she makes a good job with uh, Martingale and some uniques and the Lyra Ouroboros uh, uh, Bastion. And she got really strong with her. She has a good card support, but I doesn't see. I doesn't see her. Maybe I can put her on the grade, but I de she will never definitely be awesome in my eyes because she needs a lot of card support to be better and better and better. At some point, Sierra and Oddball. This is a starter deck Axiom character, and she says if you play a permanent with cost three or higher, make a breastback token. Tap me, make a breastback token. This is a really, I think, afterwards, she's really, she's good what she does. She gives you the uh, opportunity to say, okay, I waste my first turn, turn with a free uh, cost permanent, but I make somewhere else a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Then the enemy can choose. Will you contest a, against a 2-2-2 two, 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 or will you try to get the other, uh, other lane? What has the enemy in the hand? And I think she, uh, she gives some value to some permanents if you play it. She's really great, great results for permanents. If you play her with the foundry engineer, with the uh, mechanic, she got my eyes better. The problem of permanents right now in Axiom, it's like they are sevens. You don't run all of them because they have sometimes similar effects, sometimes too different from your play style. And one of them, uh, two of them are like uh, cost one, cost two, the XM Jammer, the Kielan Cylinder. Uh, you don't play the Kaelin Generator because why she shouldn't? Because you have the XM Reprocessor for four mana, or the for four the uh, for for rare the 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 the, 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 the Axiom Bastion with draw one. And I think. She she she's good, but she needs a little bit of work. I I see her with uh, when she has three landmarks, one reserve card, three landmarks. I will see her there. It will be fun. I think yeah, how I said she she makes good. She makes a breastback hive good, or playable. Let's say you play a foundry engineer. The next permanent cost two or less. Then 
Um, of course, you should, you, I, I talk about a six mana breast back hive, not a five mana breast back hive. So then the next car, uh, breast back hive costs four now. You play breast back hive. Breast back hive says, if I come in, I create a breast back token and says passive wise at noon, make a press breast back and the rare version says, give uh, every roboter who joins one of your expeditions plus one boost. So he comes in, you have a free, free, free breast back. A CR output says, tap me, you get a free, free, free breast back. And six mana for the foundry plus, plus the free, free best, uh, breast backs, the tools for six mana is in my eyes a great value and you have um, a pressure for the next turn because it makes every noon a fucking breast back hive. So the biggest problem is permate. Uh, the gate from Izmir, um, Intimidation, I think this was, um, Kalen Burst not. I think Axum has all one. There's a lot of perma hate cards, a lot of it. And if you play this, this is your wall turn, and you don't have to breast back hive in the next turn, it hurts if he doesn't want to run. It hurts. <laughs> Um, I think she's sort of what she, I, I think she's really sort of what she does, but I think she can be better. <laughs> Axiom, as a, she gets stronger, she's re reliant to the cards. She gets really stronger if Axiom gets better permanence. Teji and Bra uh, Brazira doesn't need cards to get, uh, to be good. And I doesn't use so often her card. How many times I used the last yesterday? I think just like three times, like three times. And Teji, Brazira, Afanas, maybe a co no, I call you not here, a fan. I use them more often, like her. I, I just use them often. That's like, so yeah, I feel here that I use them maximum three times. But she makes a great pressure, I think. So, uh, Subhar and Mamo, Subash, 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 and Mamo. Subash and Mamo says, at noon, pay one mana to make a breast back token. Uh, no, wait. Put a card in your reserve for one mana, put one card in your reserve, then make a breast back 2 2 2 token. This is a great card in Axiom because Axiom wants. I will put him here. No, I will. I will put him here. It's a great card. Uh, it gives other loveless the boost uh, or triggers the other uh, other loveless um, reserve effect. You can use the foundry mechanic or engin uh, um, the engineer effect to make the next permanent uh, cost two or less. We can use Frankenstein uh, for the reserve effect. You can sabotage then easily if you're the first player. It's really good. The biggest negativity point is like you use one mana. In the first round it's like, yeah, I have just one mana wasted, I can't play it. Maybe nothing from my hand in the first turn. So I don't know. Sometimes it's like, okay, you can use it to the start to make some pressure. Then I think later, because Axiom doesn't have uh, much really uh, um, cost reduction except for the permanence. Uh, they have no ramp, they have no anchor it, uh, they have no biggest boost. And one mana to waste later to the breast bug is like, I don't know, I can play this card for free, and uh, for free, uh, for four or five, and I get something of the value. And he's like, it's funny, it's good with Athena. I think he's really great. What he's the greatest of all of the three in my eyes, but I doesn't see him in the awesome. Um, he's like, yeah, I don't know. He he's a little bit like Kojo and Broda, but Broda doesn't pay uh, uh, one mana, and it's just in the first gun. So they're quite similar, but the problem is you have to pay this one mana. And it can be a pain in the ass in the late of the games. Really, this is 
later you doesn't maybe you doesn't use this and the problem with axiom is like how oh, i said yeah you don't have the status effect and they don't have big monsters it's like i would say it really when i depend on the sets i just will put them i don't know maybe like here but you have the great other alaflas to put in reserve you have the tinkerbell for the reserve and you have the foundry machine you can do some stuff with them it's not like this or with her sabash maybe i don't know but it's a great pressure card I, I know what she wants to do with axiom i know what sierra Otball wants to do with axiom i know what the makers wanted to do with axiom i played a lot of axiom but it's not so good it's really not good I, I think every other faction in this game is better than Axiom so far. Maybe just like for for a few percent compared to some, but other like Muna Muna makes such a great work. Lyra makes such a great work, and Axiom is like I'm here. Traced and Rossum. Traced and Rossum says. If you play a card from your reserve, I get a scrap token. If I have five or more scrap tokens, you can tap me to draw a card and put one card into reserve. It doesn't sound bad. I think from, from the three draw cards, it's the best. Because you don't need to play mana, you don't need to win in the forest region from the five forest regions in the game. The problem is just, I have to play from the reserve. I'm a really slow character. I played a little bit. I seen yesterday one played her, but this was, it feels like more a Bravos deck with the uh, Bravos have, as well, the Heaven Bastion. So why should I play Bravos Bastion with some other Bravos card? Why doesn't play just Bravos? Why have to play that in Axiom? She does. I I I know she she's a part of axiom because she says reserve. Reserve is the axiom thing in my eyes. The the mostly the axiom thing. But she's too slow. She's just really too slow to do uh, what she does. It's like you need different cards. You need uh, the Kaelin Elemental to make a little bit valuable. You have to play in the first round normal cards. And it's like, hmm, the, the speed comes later, right? The speed comes later. But if it comes later, the enemy has uh, advantage of out of here. Because he triggers his hero ability. He makes all of the stuff. He makes things with his hero. Or he's really good support of hero. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, you are done, maybe. So Sigisma, Sigisma Wingspan is a solid awesome. Why? Make a 1-1 one, one, uh, recruit, Aorus recruit, in your hero zone. Every turn, every turn you have this 1-1-1 one, one, one hero. Every turn you have this pressure on the one side of this game and it's like screw you you can sacrifice this token you can charge this token up later in the game you can do another stuff and you have this one character token and there's a lot of Aura's character who says if you have two or three or more characters use my effect and then you have this you have already this one character at the start of it you have paid nothing and it's there. Only only the presence sometimes from Sigisma gives me stress. I I sitting there and from from me is the orders. I see the token and my head my face is just a waterfall. It's like so what have I done to you? <laughs> really? Why do you hate me? So and Sigisma really Sigisma says just at noon place in the companion zone, uh, Aura's token. One, one, one. That's it. This is the world character. Just one sentence. It's done. It's fucking strong. Uh, Gorurang, Gorurang, and blah. 
Gurang is uh, is the order's need to say is uh, works really w well with tokens more than Axiom. Gurang says uh, if I have eight or less mana orbs, my uh, tokens gains uh, defender. And all of the tokens when they come in get plus one plus one as a plus one boost. Defender says I can't move forward during dusk. So you don't make progress unless you have eight or more mana. This this is this is the low the slowest the slowest character in this game. The problem is if she reaches the eight mana. You screw. If she uh, some open the gates, John Dark, you whatever. When tokens come to play, and it comes easily to play in Auras, at eight mana, you are screwed. You need a temple deck for her. And I don't know. It's like uh, I'm not the biggest fan because you have to put eight mana, so you have. You have like five rounds, no, six rounds. The first round you have three more. Was, you have six rounds, yeah, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds to make an advantage on the field. And if you play, it's like you have, you have to survive five rounds in my eyes. So I doesn't see her. Uh, not really against Muna, so I can't say about how this work against Anchorage character because Anchorage stays on the field, her tokens comes, gets boosted. I, I'm not sure in this um, matchup. I don't see it very often. I think just one time. Because of the 8 mana in my eyes, I will just put on a solid. She does a really great job. I think Sigismar does just better. And, um, yeah, what I need to say, I th maybe I need to b build a deck around her, but I see now she comes a lot now. There, there are people who are playing her, uh, the winning playing her, have fun with her. It seems like she has a, a great value somehow in, in some point that I doesn't see. Mm. I think I have to change something too much here. This is okay, this is okay. But okay, Varu and Mech? Varu, Varu and Mech, I think. Um, he is also all his recruit token maker. He says, when a bureaucrat comes into play, give him a sleep. Then if you have the next turn, a bureaucrat, uh, start of it next turn, a bureaucrat make a orders token. Uh, or, yeah, orders token one one. There's one problem. I don't know. It's a problem. Um, he he feels weird, weird because you makes you character sleep as sleep says. Just um, your character does move to reserve and at, uh, after the dusk at night. I mean, and at dusk he doesn't contri contribute to the um, to the match to the match and uh, to the expedition points. Yeah, but the bureaucrats say the bureaucrats want to stay on the board and lose, because if they lose at dusk, something will happen, and this is quite annoying sometimes. I just put him here. I don't know. I f feel kind of weird. I maybe here, but I put him here right now, just at the first glance of the box, because to the. the Okay, you need you need cards for him, right? You you just need cards for him. You need specific cards, bureaucrats. You need bureaucrats for him. It's like for Gorak needs tokens, uh, Sierra needs uh, permanence, Aurax needs zero base statistic cards. Nevenka is just here because of her effect. Um, you need bureaucrats. The problem with bureaucrats is Robin Hood. A fucking stable card, worth his money, and is annoying as hell. You have uh, Toth, Toth, who say when I does move forward, make an artist token. So next turn, Toth, 
stuff doesn't move forward. Oh, I make an Aorus token one. Oh, you have a bureaucrat. bureaucrat. I make another Aorus token. And then the Aorus gamer a player comes up with charge. Every character gets plus one, plus one, plus one. Everyone. And this is this is the problem with Aorus in my, as, when you play against them. It's like they will throw you out with tokens. They will smash you with throw tokens. They will just throw the cards at you. They have so many tokens, they just throw at you in real. And then there comes the charge, and before the round, it was like 5 5 5, and then boom, it's 15 15. 15. And you're like, so, hmm. I was snobbed. So, but I there is, there are great bureaucrats out there, but I just like the point where I have to need bureaucrats to build a deck. This is really a specific deck type. You need bureaucrats. You need good bureaucrats. You make may needs unique bureaucrats. For her, you just need tokens. It doesn't matter from where they comes. You need just tokens. You need to survive and have just tokens. For Sierra, you just need permanents. Permanents are the sp mostly the spells of Axiom. Axiom has less spells than permanent. If you ignore, uh, if you just go out from the view of the common cards, right? Just, just the common cards. They have seven common cards and eight, nine, eight, and eight, eight rare cards because Heaven Bastion comes into it. But they have them a little bit more spells in rare because out of faction. So. And he just needs base zero statistic cards. He doesn't need effects. She needs dice. And I think this is this is my ranking right now. I think with box two there will be a, a lot of changes. I see I think I really think they will move up. They will move up and maybe they will move down because they can't perform anymore against the new cards, maybe. So, I know I tried to focus on the heroes and uh, I shifted a little bit to the cards, but we have to see. I mean, you build around a deck, uh, you build a deck around the heroes, right? This is like this. The the heroes are a supportive character to make your deck worthy. So, yeah, this is it. this is my uh, ultra TCG ranking so far. For the first season at January, end of the January will be uh, box two. This play two. After this, uh, I will play a little bit more, and maybe the ranking will change a little bit. So we doesn't get new heroes so far now. So we will be uh, with the same here, fifteen heroes, what you see right now, and then maybe we will see what happens. So therefore, I wish you good night. Sleep well. We will see you soon. Promise. <laughs>